Hi, uh, in this video we're going to talk about inflection and derivation linguistically, so what the differences are. Um, so really quickly, these are two sorts of morphological processes. Remember that morphology uh, it means a lot of different things in different, in different settings, but in linguistics morphology, um, let me get a color here real quick. Uh, you can think of this as the shape of words. We, a lot of times we say study, lo um, logos is study. Uh, in Greek, which it sort of is in compounds in English, it more directly means uh, word. Um, it, mean, it has some other meanings in, in ancient Greek, but it can more directly mean word. Um, so I believe this was actually meant to mean the study of shapes, um, so the study of shapes of words. Uh, but it's kind of nifty that in this case it's actually sort of the shape of words. So. A morphology in a linguistic context is the changes we make in words in order to come up with new words or use them in, in different contexts. <clears throat> um, so we'll talk about inflection really quickly. Uh, inflection generally is a change in a word uh, that results in uh, words of the same category. So if we start with a noun, when we perform inflection, we will get a noun. Um, it has the same root and basic semantic value or semantic category. Um, so, for example, we have cat. We will inflect it to make a plural, cats. Um, it has the same root, so it's the same root word, cat. Um, it has the same semantic, uh, overall semantic value. It, it points to the same thing in the real world. Um, and it's the same semantic category. It's still an animal. Um, it still uh, is a certain subtype of mammal. You know, it's, it's, it's categorically essentially the same thing. Um, <clears throat> but it responds to syntactic requirements. Um, so if you said these, the word these, um, now all of a sudden you have to put a plural behind that. You can't, or after that, you can't put a, a singular in there syntactically in English. That's not allowed. So it responds to that syntactic requirement. Um, plurals, for example, in other languages don't necessarily have the same syn syntactic requirement. For example, in Farsi, you put a singular um, uh, after a number, so if you would say um, <clears throat> chahar, uh, sorry, I'll just say chahar zan for women, right? <clears throat> um, and that would be the singular of woman, so it's like saying for woman. And so it, it really is a syntactic requirement. Sometimes we try to think of it as a logical requirement, and it's not. It's a syntactic requirement specific to the language. Um, and it usually can be applied to all members of a specific word class. So in English, we can make any word plural. And that's sort of true. There are some words that are their own plural. But, I mean, there's not a word that we think of that doesn't have a, as not having a plural for the most part. Um, mass nouns will be sort of logically uh, different than that. You know, you don't really have a, uh, a plural of a mass noun usually unless it's different types of mass noun. For example, like juice. And I, we wouldn't say, I'm drinking these juices unless you're saying, like, these types of juice. Um, but in general, it's not a, a perfect rule, but in general, uh, these processes, an inflectional process, can be applied to all members of word class. Another example of this would be, I run, he runs, right? The, the change, that extra S that we put on there, is put on there to match the syntactic to, uh, requirement. Uh, it goes with he, so it has to have that S. And uh, we can make a third person singular uh, present indicative active form in English <clears throat> uh, for other verbs. So goes, um, says, it'll be slightly different in form, but we can do essentially the same, create the same form. Uh, derivation is different. Um, so we often end up in a different category. Uh, so we'll have, for example, um, that's a good, good example. Uh, do, 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 um, uh, destroy. This actually comes from Latin, so this derivation was originally a Latin derivation, but we'll, we'll just do this. Destroy. Um, and then we have destruction. Um, so destroy is a verb. Destruction would be, sorry, a noun. Um, different semantic value. So sometimes the the semantic value of the derived word is completely different. <clears throat> uh, so cat, then we can create cat burglar. Um, we'll just call this a derivation, even though you might actually be able to say that this is 
not necessarily a derivation, but for today's purposes it is. Um, it's certainly not an inflection. Um, so cat burglar, uh, now we're, at, we're talking about something that's completely different. It's not even a, a predatory mammal. Well, it sort of is, but, but it's not that type of mammal. It's a, a totally different animal. It's a person. Um, and they have none of the characteristics really of a cat, except for maybe sneakiness. Um, and it's not conditioned by syntax. In other words, we don't, we don't, uh, perform this change because, um, the words in this phrase require a cat burglar rather than a cat. Um, if I said this cat, I could say this cat burglar. If I said these cats, I could say these cat burglars. We don't have to have the burglar there, um, in order to use, uh, this or these in front of it. Um, so those are the main characteristics. Now, it's not always cut and dry. They're not always, there's not always a clear distinction. Linguists will sometimes, um, <clears throat> argue about, uh, about whether something is an inflection or derivation. They sort of exist on a continuum. And so on one side, we'll have some clear inflections and the other clear derivations. Uh, so for some examples, <clears throat> um, beautiful to beautiful Lee, uh, this definitely changes the part of speech. So it's now over here, we have an adjective versus a or sorry, an adjective over here versus an adverb over here. <clears throat> but there's some things to note. Um, so first of all, it has a very similar semantic value and it can be applied to, it can be applied across the, um, to most adjectives, not to all adjectives. Um, so you think maybe it should be an inflection. It can't be really applied to colors, for example, like greenly. You wouldn't really say you did something in a green manner, greenly. Um, and historically, this li uh, actually comes from an adjectival derivation, so it's, it's not really a historically always a, an adverbial thing. We also have run and running. Uh, generally, we consider this an inflection, but it can be, um, it can have a different semantic meaning. So uh, if you say, um, I like running, uh, Actually, that's probably not a good example. Never mind. We'll we'll drop the semantic meaning here for this one. <clears throat> but it can have uh, it can be change. Sorry, this is what I, I should have said. It can change uh, noun class or it can change for word classes. So this run is a verb, and running can be an adjective. Like um, he is running uh, the store is functions syntactically, sort of like an adjective, and then. Um, I like running. That's a, a noun, a nominal usage. Um, so it's not always 100% obvious whether things should be considered an inflection or derivation. But keep in mind that these are sort of broad ends of a spectrum that we'll talk about, and they're really important for talking about um, <clears throat> as, as we progress. Oops.